Hey folks, I thought uh, to shoot a follow-up video to rephrase some of the introduction and uh, guidelines we talked about yesterday and also I would like to uh, introduce you a little bit more into the Autodesk website and give you some tips in how to do your first digitized project. So if you go for example to the Autodesk website, let's start there first and you go to uh, apps and maybe one two three D catch. You go to basically the software website. So you, we are not launching the application. If you scroll down a little bit, you will find here a section for uh, like learning the basics and some tutorials. And if I click, for example, learn the basics, then you will find a small quick starting guide. And for example, they repeat most of what I mentioned yesterday. So if you have an object, try to shoot many pictures, like in a 30, uh, 360 degree loop around it, 20 images maybe, and try to have very small steps or degrees between the different images because you want to have lots of overlap from one image to the next image and then small perspective changes of your subject matter. That will help the software to identify features of the object you would like to digitize. And once you have one loop done, uh, maybe you can make another loop from a different position so that maybe you you provide the software more information in how to read an object. Also step two, what is very important, your background. So you should not have a background that for example is empty or plain white. If it's white, put down sticky notes with some interesting sketches on it. That will help the software to understand the space you're standing inside because if the software only sees the white floor you know it is a floor but the software can't really understand it and a different approach would be to maybe put something kind of like a newspaper below it or a book and again what's important is you do not or you should not use something that has a repetitive pattern because everything that's very repetitive can confuse actually the software. And then we'll show you what possible results could be. And then now step three, you upload all your images and then you do the process and let the software generate your model. And if you go further down, there is the, the tutorial section and those are actually very good videos to watch. They focus a little bit also on the PC software. So if you would like to install the software on your PC, you can do that as well. And for example, they also mention few other very important parts. For example, best is not to have really dramatic light. Best is kind of like some sort of overcast or soft light like a soft box so you don't have um, dark shadows for example or really bright areas your object should also not be over illuminated by light and the reason why for example uh, you should also not shoot against the light is because I marked it down here so whenever you you walk around your object, try to plan ahead that your camera never faces a light source or a bright area. And with a bright area, for example, that could maybe be a wood floor that's glossy and is actually reflecting the light from the sun. Because those bright areas can actually confuse the, the software because your smartphone will always auto expose and basically adjust the, the lightning of the image and then you have different images with different lightning values and that is something you should try to minimize so in a closed room with nice soft lights or for example in the wood shop where we have the fluorescent lights uh, 
that's for example a perfect environment and in my room I simply when I do a digitizing I close the curtains so I don't have sharp shadows and I soften everything a little bit the object should always try to fill completely your your picture frame so the bigger it is now the more visual information the camera can actually understand uh, your object should of course also be in focus and not the, the background because objects that are blurred really make it difficult for the software to identify the features. Also for photos, uh, I just learned yesterday that three Mbit photos are actually enough. If you shoot with eight Mbit photos, then the software will scale those images down anyway. So that's more than fine. And uh, yeah, I talked about the, the background or the ground plane. And also, for example, with the ground plane, do not shoot uh, on glossy or reflective ground planes. So if you have, for example, a wood floor that's highly reflective, try not to have any light reflection on it or, well, just maybe if you have a carpet or something, put it on the carpet. But then again, when you use a carpet or something else, try to make sure you do not have two geometrically repetitive patterns. Also, a small tip in case you want to shoot with your digital SLR camera and you have the problem that maybe, like, let's say a light comes from a window and you, you might step in front of the window and then cast your own body shadow onto the object, you can just use your, your uh, camera and then zoom in really far and then with that zoom setting do your your walk around so this way basically you can stay away a little bit more of your from your object but because you zoom in you can still then make sure that your object perfectly will be framed inside the picture so those are some of the the how to's and basics now if you, for example, would like to access your models, maybe some some tests didn't work out, you would like to delete them or download them, you could go to your, uh, your profile. So see, I'm logged in and you can go to models. And then the software, uh, sorry, the website should switch to there. There it is. And for example, here you, you see some of the cleaned up versions of Mitch. Also, one of the reasons why this yesterday didn't really work well was uh, I think the computer models were way, way too big for my laptop to handle. So I cleaned actually those up a little bit and now they, they work better. For example, now you see this is 4.9 megabyte, this is 28, and this is one untouched model where the room is still inside and you see this model is 55 megabyte and because we were using the the web browser I guess the, the web browser software is not really very good for dealing with very complicated or very dense meshes so if you would like for example to let's say delete something just go to there and then delete so you see there's always kind of like a small uh, gear when you go to the gear you could for example make it public delete it or get into model information for example yeah I would like to actually open this one first so if I, if I click on the info for example you could specify category if it should be shared inside the public library and then you have also different uh, downloads for example the straight STL so this STL is maybe something you could send to the printer the foam bust vertical zip this is actually the OBJ file including the images and then the photo files well of course those are the all the images we uploaded to shoot and actually I would like to open
this photo, uh, sorry, not this photo, this project first. So here I have it, for example. Now I mentioned if you have a ground plane, try not to make the ground plane very repetitive. For example, I shot this bust or this model on like a cutting mat and you can clearly see those lines. But if you take a look here, you can see that the pattern kind of got confused. So the, the software can actually get irritated, not maybe understanding what's actually just a texture or what's a feature, because again, it's a photographic approach to try to digitize an object. And it's, it's trying to do that by comparing like irregular or irregularities. And wherever something is very irregular, it can start understanding that much better compared to something that's too regular. Interestingly, actually, you see the uh, sticky notes actually were even digitized as they're bent up. And this was basically a small quick photo series on my computer table. I just, as you can see, I put the bust vertically up and down and there are some, yeah, some issues with it. And then I was just curious, well, if I only shoot the object from here, a few shots to there, how will, for example, it turn out if maybe I put it onto the ground plane? So for example, with this one and, uh, Let's edit it. So whenever you do, or before you actually do a digitizing process or a catch process, try to plan ahead and be smart in the way how you arrange your object, how you position it, and then from where do you shoot it? And also what of the model you also only need. So uh, takes a second for the software to load. Yeah, okay, I guess we'll see just in a second. Okay, I'm going to pause for a second and once the model is fully loaded, then I will restart. So Chrome actually <laughs> crashed two times and now I'm trying out Safari and I'm not sure where the issue is right now. So also Safari has an issue opening the file. And again, the properly the problem is that uh, we're trying to do some heavy geometry work inside a web browser and of course, Technically speaking, web browsers aren't really made for that type of work. So unfortunately, we might have to skip just editing the stuff in the cloud, but you know, that's not really actually a big problem because fortunately we can just download the stuff and uh, do it by hand. So I go to, again, one, two, three, D app. I go to my models. So in this case, I only used one to 3D catch to upload my photos and then to digitize the photos and create a model. And I just go to download. And then I would like to download the mesh pack file. Yes. And then the software is going to compress everything. And it is downloaded. Okay, so let's 
go to my downloads folder. So yeah, so here you see again the UV texture for my object and then there is the mesh object part. And let's start Blender again and I'm not in cycles. Currently I'm just in Blender render. Go to import wave front go to the downloads folder foam mesh object import might take a second because it's a 20 megabyte polygon file and there's actually my my design what is actually really uh, impressive I don't know if you actually can see it but those were carved parts into the foam model so the software actually was really smart enough understanding that now there are a few things I have to do so I have to rotate it and so I'm scaling it and uh, sorry not scaling rotating it all the time trying to make it even And maybe from the top view. Okay. And then with B and then drawing a selection around my object. Okay, then I can press Control I to invert my selection, X and delete all the vertices. So I cleaned up my model a little bit. And then if we go into textured, there you see everything. So the reason why I wanted to, to show you this one is I actually for this shot utilized 32 images. So you see I started actually from this angle and right here where my mouse is so the lower right corner that is actually where my window is so i was not standing right in front of it i was more shooting basically kind of like from the side tip from here like into or onto my object and then as you can see i just walked around and this is actually really great to show. Um, hold on, sorry. Let's go full screen. So if I now quickly go through, you might notice that the center part tries to stay exposure-wise pretty much the same. But always here, you see there are there are some reflections on it and this part is really bright. So I was actually just curious to see how far the software is going to, to tolerate it. Um, but I guess it was not too bright, so it did not really irritate the software. But you can see that by, by not pointing the camera towards the light or the window, the exposure of all the images more or less actually stayed the same. Maybe this one here, the lower part is a little bit darker, but again, my object itself pretty much remained being the same. And and there you can see like how I how I basically walked around. And then actually uh, I think from here then I moved my camera up, made another pass. So I was digitizing it more a little bit from above and then actually from here I was just curious what happens in case I make one swipe and just try to focus for example on this smaller arc here the lower part and because the back side of this model is pretty much not really very important it's rather flat I just positioned my object onto the wood floor and yeah, as you can see inside Blender, 
the process actually worked out really, really well. Now I have really nice and crisp lines. The problem, of course, are cavities. So they didn't really translate really well. Maybe with some, maybe with a little bit of better light that not being uh, so much in the shadow. Uh, let's go back to the photos. Yeah, you see, this is actually pretty dark. So the the software might have issues to really read features. And for example, here I tried to make photos from different angles so that maybe I show how those edge is defined. But again, even in this image, this whole part, this triangle is very dark. So the software can't really read it. So I should have had a little bit more, more light in that. Maybe we'll make one more test render to see how this actually will turn out. Uh, what actually I found quite interesting is, uh, and maybe you should not try to do this. See those black lines? Those are my sketch lines. And the software actually translated that into actual geometry. Now, they're not too bad. So I guess the, the amount of variation in terms of like highlights and shadows, for example, here you can clearly see kind of like the cuts and the grooves. This is really what the software needs to work with. So this foam model, while being out of one color, has enough shaded and highlighted parts for the software to understand features in it. So properly the, the lines or anything that wasn't really necessary maybe might might have made things even a little bit worse. Um, so even, for example, if you have a small interface part, you could just carve this part in or slightly sketch it in. But just be aware of that if you draw something on it, it could actually translate into a small thin raised line. So, yeah. So again, whenever the, the web interface actually is slow or has issues with working, then maybe don't necessarily use the, the catch online software to view or edit your mesh. Simply just go to your profile, go to models, and then simply save the mesh package file because then you can do all the polygon manipulation and clean up inside uh, Blender and it will be much faster and also you won't encounter any yeah crashes or something. To finish the section with the foam, what you see here is now a comparison of the object being rotated 180 degrees. So this is the, the first scan I did. So the light is actually up here, so the window illuminating the front part and the the cavities where for example the armpit would be you can clearly see are in in shadow on the right side you see that the light is actually coming from here so light is illuminating those cavities and majority wise actually the the digital results are very much the same but if you go into the plain shaded mode without textures, you actually can see that, for example, here, you have much more detail compared to, for example, here. Not really a lot, but you can clearly see that there is a bigger section that is uh, filled with some sort of geometry where the software actually yeah, basically had no no ability to really identify how the surface features are built. So I, th I thought that this is actually might be quite interesting to see the comparison that just from also where the light source is coming or the light sources are coming, you can 
help the software to read something when, for example, you have concave uh, yeah, geometry parts. To end this, uh, I actually would like to go back to some of the issues we had yesterday when we made our first test run to digitize Mitch. And you see when I inside Blender pan around, you can clearly see there's actually a lot inside the background. So that might not necessarily be very efficient. And also, let's say, if we want to digitize most of the front of the head, maybe from here, rotate it around till there, maybe with Mitch being against a wall, might have been a better approach. And in Blender, I want to utilize this. And again, you see this is so much faster than actually in the web browser online. You can just download the file and then manipulate it and send it to the 3D printer. There was actually one other part that really gave the, the software a headache. And actually, I forgot to point that out. So here's, for example, another test run I did. And you can, for example, see that some of those photos seem to be misaligned. So in case something like this happens, probably what might have happened to the software is that it didn't really understand or when it was trying to compare features, it got confused. And the reason why it actually got confused, if I go to here, you can see that even this this image, which should be here, is actually not part of the texture there. And maybe the reason for that was that some students actually moved around through the room while I was taking the photos. Of course, whatever you digitize, that includes also your background. Nothing should ever from one photo to the next photo move because then the software will get confused because again, when it sees all those photos, it tries to identify repetitive elements or features. It builds up a, like a matrix. And then from that, it will extract the information to generate the 3D model. So I'm pretty much sure if we try to reshoot this one, but with him against a wall, with a less distracting and complicated uh, background, it will first help the software to produce a better result. And also you will get a computer model that probably will be better in detail and also has less cleanup work in the background. And yeah, so this was actually, I think everything I wanted to, to show you. And yeah, good luck with using the software. So you see that even I have to make here or there a test scan, but thankfully it's free. It doesn't cost you a lot, only takes 10, 20 minutes, but then you have a nice form model digitized and you can continue working with it.